immediate action. They've been struck by mortars and machine gun fire, and they've assessed the point man as an urgent casualty. So what we're seeing is a demonstration of autonomous ground vehicle technology. So the GUS system is an unmanned ground vehicle that's capable of a couple different modes of control. It can still be driven manually, just like a regular all-terrain utility vehicle. It can also be tele where a remote controller can drive the vehicle from a remote location. It can also be programmed to run completely autonomously. In that situation, the vehicle is actually driving, making decisions on its own, and navigating the terrain. Uh, it can do that uh, either following waypoints that an operator defines uh, using map points, or it actually can be put in a follow me mode, where the vehicle will simply follow an operator wherever he goes. It makes me move faster when the enemy comes. Now you ain't gotta have to worry about that thing. It'll take care of itself. It'll follow me if I go somewhere, or my the operators. It'll follow them, or if I needed to go somewhere, all they gotta do is point and go, and it goes, or just control it themselves. What it does is it carries 1,200 pounds. Marines right now carry about 100 pounds on their back whenever they hump around. This causes all sorts of injuries between uh, muscle, muscular skeletal, and just you know. Uh, heat exhaustion. We get heat exhaustion all the time. It's about 90 degrees out here and I'm sweating profusely. Uh, I'm not going to pass out, but if I was carrying 100 pounds and I was walking through the jungle with my M16, I mean, there's a giant possibility that could happen. So by taking all that weight off of the Marine and putting it in the back of this vehicle that follows behind them and goes exactly where you want it to go, uh, you've just helped that squad accomplish its mission. And it's also been uh, outfitted with a cas casualty evacuation system. So if there were at the forward operating point have a casualty, there's a litter rack that they can load into the vehicle and quickly get that casualty to a medevac point uh, without taking as many people out of the fight as you normally would. You'll notice as they pass by on the top of the cab, they have a green light. That green light signifies they're being operated in autonomous mode. So basically the vehicle is outfitted with a whole suite of COTS sensors. There's a commercial off-the-shelf uh, sensors that use primarily LiDAR technology to build up a terrain, a uh, perception uh, map of the, the world around the vehicle. The vehicle then has computers that processes all that information in real time and then it can actually control by wire all the different uh, actuators on the vehicle like the steering wheel, the throttle, the brake, and the transmission. So it takes all that information and it can actually manipulate how it moves and navigates obstacles into the terrain uh, without having to have an operator drive it. Not to mention the fact that it's a safety issue. Um, for the cargo UGV, if the vehicle blows up and there's fuel on the back and you have two people inside, then that's two people that aren't going to get to go home. Now if you take those two people out, well by golly, I'm pretty sure that there's, there's two sets of parents that are extraordinarily happy that we spent the money on autonomous systems.